little man. Do you want to say hello? Oh, boop. <laughs> Thank you for the boop. Thank you for the boop. I think my butt looks good. back on the YouTube. Today is my mastermind weekend, so we are at one of the many lovely mansions that we rent out for the weekend every time we have a mastermind event. Um, ideally and usually they are big enough to fit everybody so everyone can actually stay here. We have a group of about nine incredible women that we are digging all up into their businesses this upcoming weekend. So this video is gonna be a little hodgepodge of clips from that and little parts of the talks that I'm doing and just sharing you just the behind the scenes of the whole entire thing. So let's go. self-actualize and the mission and how I'm doing that now is helping entrepreneurs and business owners figure out who they are and what their mission is and what their vision is to then like step into that alignment and step into what their specific project is right now that's going to help other people self-actualize so there's a couple things so yes to content okay um, the other thing is just the the energetics around it. Uh -huh. So if you are having an experience where you have any aversion to investment or if you have any stories about it being too much or not being able to afford it or it not being the right time, uh -huh. that could come across in your energy as you're having a conversation with them. Where we allow people to kind of be in their story is where we like, agree with them. So like, oh, I can totally get that. It's worth fucking going there. It's so worth being like, can you tell me a little bit more about that? I would love to know, I mean, just if you're investing in any other fitness coach or any other thing that's actually really gonna change your life, I would love to know what your experience with your own budgeting and finances is. Being able to kind of go there with them and create safety around the money conversation is a really beautiful way to just have them answer their own questions about it. Because most of us don't go to the money conversation because it's shameful and it's private and like, we don't talk about money or we don't yeah. talk about sex or like we don't talk about stuff like that with strangers like this whole mm -hmm. thing which is really not true there doesn't need to be this whole taboo energy around it they feel shame they feel vulnerable even telling some that's why people ghost mm -hmm. even telling someone like i don't have the money like that's shameful like that's a survival mm -hmm. mode scarcity thing like hey i want to like do this thing that changes my life but like i don't feel like i have the money and if you're coming at them, even if you don't say it, with judgy energy, they don't feel safe to talk to you about it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so on the sheet that you guys have, um, we're just gonna go through a quick exercise. I can ask you guys how you would prefer to do it. My intuitive, um, my intuition's telling me that we can do it kind of live with someone that doesn't feel clear on their own customer experience. <laughs> but the process is essentially writing down your customer's journey that they had to go through before they got to you. They first got into fitness because they felt fat and then they followed somebody on Instagram and then they tried this fat quick fix thing and then they 
gained some weight after they did it, and then they found this thing, and then they like tried 20 million different things, and then they were like, you know what, holistic healing is the thing that, you know, the whole process that people actually go through. Mm -hmm. And now they're looking for someone who is like you. Mm -hmm. So as you walk mm -hmm. through that, you can fill the stuff out. And then they went through their own fitness journey. They maybe like competed, and they were like struggling with their own body image. And then from there, like, probably like two year time span, they like totally crushed it in fitness and then they saw me transition into business. And they were like, oh my God, I wanna start a business. I wanna like learn from you, I wanna grow on social media. I like watched you do the whole fitness thing and like now I wanna figure out my whole business experience. And then they maybe took one of my programs like they probably took FCA and if they didn't take FCA they're like consuming my content they're looking at my podcast they're like in this whole consumption phase they're trying things on their own they're like posting their own content they're comparing themselves they're definitely having a tough time with like consistency they're definitely having a tough time with like imposter syndrome And then they start, like, they either, like, take one of my programs or they start actually getting clients. And finding a level of success. And then they're seeing, um, oh my god, Amanda has, like, a mastermind. I have success. Um, I've done a lot in my business. I've been online for a long time, but like there's definitely some untapped potential. Also, I saw Amanda do like spiritual stuff. I'm kind of interested in that. I don't know like what it is and I kind of know what it is, but I want to like learn a little bit more about that. So they've been on their own journey that's almost parallel to mine in a lot of ways where I've done a lot of stuff. They've seen me do stuff, but they're also going on their own body image journey, likely their own um, business journey and social media journey, comparing themselves, getting success, and then finally, like, I want to really crush it. Belief systems could be anything that we talked about all morning. It could be feeling like um, fear of failure because you're actually finally hitting these levels of success that, like, there are glass ceilings you're experiencing. The um, Wounding could be around achievement, which is where like the architect stuff comes in. You both with your mic and headphones. Yeah, Jessica. She's great. Yeah. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Gucci Radio. I am so stoked to bring you our incredible guest today. If you guys don't know, you must be living under a rock. Her name is Gabby Bernstein and she has been a spiritual teacher since she was a teenager and I heard that I was like, oh my god, that's incredible. And she's made her contribution to the world through her talks, multiple, multiple best-selling books, journals, card decks, and just her presence. She is someone that's truly been living her spiritual design and following what has brought her the most joy along the way, and that's really what we're here to talk about, her most recent book, Super Attractor, which I have been delving into all morning, and it's truly so, so, so potent, so I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for your time today, Gabby. Welcome to the show. What's up, guys? I just wanted to share something that I think is really important. So in the last couple of years, I've been having so many conversations with tons of entrepreneurs and obviously you guys saw me here on Instagram making tons of videos and then all of a sudden I wasn't on Instagram or sorry YouTube making tons of videos and I switched into a totally different paradigm where I was and still am selling courses and creating group coaching programs and hosting in-person events and doing tons of other businessy stuff that's a totally different paradigm from what people who are on YouTube are used to watching and seeing happen on YouTube. You might be used to watching people create clothing lines or make uh, or have like a gym or doing something that is actually interesting to film in person, right? And when I was here on YouTube, I was asking myself, okay, it seems as though the only people that are really, really successful on YouTube are the ones that are making clothing lines, selling products, or owning a gym. And I thought that's what I was gonna do. I was like, you know what? I've almost started a clothing line like three times now. 
that should be the thing. But I just didn't have an awareness that there was really anything else out there. I joined a mastermind and I started to see and meet people that were doing totally the different things, that they had these coaching programs, that they had um, team members and they had these things called webinars and email lists and like so many, so many different things. And I was like mind blown because it gave me more permission to explore and see what else was out there for me to create because I didn't really feel great to do a product line or I just didn't it just didn't fit for me and I didn't know why at the time and I see in hindsight now why that really didn't fit for me and I've been collecting conversations with entrepreneurs everywhere from like the guy who does my hair at the hair salon I recently was chatting with him and he was like honestly I just want to do hair I don't feel like owning this whole place. It's expensive. Managing the other staff and managing everything. Like my dad wanted me to own this so I could make more money. But like, I just love doing hair. And I've talked to other people who like love being on the ground with the people, like the people that go really deep with their one-on-one -on -one clients in person or the coaches that are like, I just want to do one-on-one -on -one work and like go real, real deep with people. And I don't understand how I can just make a course and just trust that people would go through it and get the result. And then there's people on the other end of the spectrum, like authors, for example, I was just interviewing Gabby Bernstein for my podcast for her book. And she's written like seven books and just talks all the time, but doesn't necessarily resonate with like getting clients and doing coaching. And I'm sure she's done that at some point, but like she's a pure, pure teacher. So we have these feelings and we see these models, especially more and more now, because there's so many models to look at. We see other people doing something and we're like that might be the thing that I should do. And then we kind of model what we're doing after that. But it's not, it doesn't always fit with what we want. It doesn't always fit with like our natural way of being. And I thought for a long time that I had to fix my natural way of being. I remember when I first did the Enneagram test and I realized that I am a nine on the Enneagram, which is the peacemaker the like natural conflict avoidance, which doesn't, these tests aren't meant to put you in a box. They're there essentially to help you be in a, aware of like what your ego structure is, right? Like your natural way of being that was built based on every experience you've had in your childhood from like every second of every day up until the age of around seven, um, along with, yeah, that's mostly it for that one specifically. And for a long time, I thought I had to fix that. I'm also a projector on the human design. And when I learned about that, I was like, I can just be myself and I don't have to try to like change the core of who I am and how I operate to fit this model that I think I have to fit into. It was mind blowing and just gave me so much permission to like trust my intuition and trust the part of me that already knew what to do which is crazy, which is exactly why I wanted to create another tool and, and give you all an opportunity to see the patterns within yourself that can help you figure out what your best business model is, which is why I created the Entrepreneurial Archetype Quiz that I'm so excited to share about. If you haven't checked it out, it's in the link in the description box. And this quiz, I've seen four specific types of archetypes, um, types of people that fit into four archetypes that I've seen in this like online business social media space. There's tons more, but these four core, core four are creator, which is like your typical influencer YouTuber who almost like doesn't care about what happens on the back end because you're just like spending so much time creating, right? It's like this creative energy. And then the teacher who is speaking, doing podcasts, writing books, teaching courses, and even they have an educational YouTube channel, but they're like more of the expert, like the evidence-based community, uh, the, the people that are like high level experts at what they do. And they're really, they really value education, certifications, things like that. Um, I did not fit into that box either. And I was trying to be put in that box for a while. And I was like, you know what? That's just not me. Um, then there's the coach. The coach is the one that likes to do the work with the people. They're empathetic. They love connecting. Um, they are down to like work with a lot of clients, but they also really love going deep with those clients in the transformational process. And then there is the entrepreneur who is the one that's like starting clothing lines, starting businesses, building and scaling, and they love the business side of things and they love systems. They're visionary and they build shit. I tr I've tried all of these. I've been in all of these archetypes and I've integrated all of them and we all have all of them. But what I've found is that there's usually like a one, a two, a three, and a four. And if you're living out of that order, 
your, your business model is going to be really hard and there's going to be resistance that happens. And that's exactly what I noticed for myself. The more that I got out of my creator, the more resistance I felt and the less, the, the more difficult of a time I had creating the results that I wanted to create. You can still power through and create the results, but it's going to be a lot harder to do it when you're out of your alignment for your archetype, which is so exciting. So for me, what I found is that my natural way of being is creator, coach, teacher, entrepreneur. And what a liberating feeling to just know that that's actually how I have to set up my entire business model structure so I can be myself and just live in that. That being said, take the quiz, check out what you are, comment below in the comment section which archetype you are, and I would love to hear from you how this helps you.